never break a promise to yourself and what I mean by that if you say you go do something then do it oftentimes being a mother a wife a community leader and doing all these things and being spread thin you will put everybody before yourself on this journey of me becoming a multi-millionaire I want to share with you some of the things that was near and dear to my heart there's no particular order but let's just keep it real because I feel like those are the stories that keeps me going that keeps me motivated set them boundaries from them toxic family members just because they blood don't mean you got to keep putting up with that dysfunction. And I want y'all to quit looking at people for the potential of who they can become, but look at them for who they are today. That's going to give you that accountability. That's going to have that tough love and tell you what you need to hear and not what you need to hear. I remember because I grew up in the hood and people were like, oh, you changed. You right. I did change. I was supposed to. you supposed to evolve. You should not be the same person that you was a year ago. I need y'all to say no with me. Okay. No. Come on. Repeat after me. No. No, 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 no. People really be jealous. And I just learned recently how your friends become your enemies. And welcome to your success stories. I'm your girl Nika Johnson and I'm gonna help you get there. I'm a credit coach and budgeting expert. Today we'll be talking about 10 secrets navigating success. I am that person that loved talking. I used to get talked about by talking to myself when I was younger and now I make a lot of money for talking. I used to love going live on Facebook and on Instagram. Well, what happened was, is I love having those uncomfortable conversations and just keeping it real, being authentic and, you know, just honestly vulnerable. Sometimes with social media, people will tell all the highs, but they don't tell the lows. And I'm, I'm not that type of person. Well, when I would tell my stories, and it may impact someone else, then people start to feel some type of way. So I keep it real. I act, I name drop, then I get the backlash. Then I speak general, and then folks be thinking I'll be talking about them, and I don't be talking about them. But hey, if the shoes fit, then wear. So I decided to take my talents to YouTube. So welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. And we will be talking about a lot of shit that people don't like talking about the real the honest the things that you need to know and so in that aspect is my first video uh, with releasing my channel yeah! I thought about telling you guys the 10 secrets of navigating success so a little bit about me is I grew up in a single parent home with a repeated cycle of teenage pregnancy at the age of 16 I have learned why my family dynamics may shape who I am they won't determine what I become I am that generation curse breaker I was that person that ultimately I wanted more and I didn't want to become a product of my environment so I graduated from the University of Nebraska Lincoln major business administration um, I have 15 years in the financial world um, industry you you know I was able to become debt free and then I started acquiring more debt but there's a such thing between good debt and bad debt and I'll teach you that um so everything that I have done I will teach you guys you know so last year I purchased a, a half a million dollar home at the age of 31 you know so I remember at the age of 21 and I went to go test drive at a BMW and I was like oh that's not in my budget but one day it will be and that one day is now so I'm not where I want to be but I'm definitely not where I used to be on this journey of me becoming a multi-millionaire I want to share with you some of the things that was near and dear to my heart. There's no particular order, but let's just keep it real because I feel like those are the stories that keeps me going, that keeps me motivated. Number one, never break a promise to yourself. And what I mean by that, if you say you go do something, then do it. Oftentimes being a mother, a wife, a community leader, and doing all these things and being spread thin, you will put everybody before yourself. So let's say, for example, ladies, you've been like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. By the the end of the work day you cook you clean you get the kids ready and then you decided oh, okay now I'm tired I'm gonna do it tomorrow no stop that do it today there will never be a perfect time then to start so my goal to you is never break a promise to yourself the same way when you dating and you get to know a person they tell you they gonna do something and they don't do it and they a liar 
I'm here to tell you quit lying to yourself. Never break a promise to yourself. If you say you go do something, you do it. Do not pour from an empty cup. You have to make for sure that you're putting yourself first in all aspects. Ain't nobody gonna love you like you. And as you're growing and navigating success, when you're becoming the generation curse breaker, when you are doing all these things that you don't know what to do, but you figuring that out. So I'm gonna say this again and make for sure you listen. You come a little closer, you hear? Never break another promise to yourself. Two, you are going to outgrow your people. What I mean, friends, your family. Set them boundaries from them toxic family members. Just because they blood don't mean you got to keep putting up with that dysfunction. Nope. Just because it's your friend from it's your child godparent or it's your high school uh, friend or anything that be. It's okay to outgrow people. And I want y'all to quit looking at people for the potential of who they can become, but look at them for who they are today. And you're going to have to make some tough choices. What is that phrase? Hang around for millionaires, you be the next? That is truly true. It's because you become so like, I don't want to say like a product of your environment, but the people that you hang around with. So the phrase that I like to say is like, who's your board of directors? You know how you have an organization, a company, and they make these decisions. Who's the board of directors in your life? Let me know who's the top five people, like who's your core people that you could call on, that you could vent, that's going to give you that accountability, that's going to have that tough love and tell you what you need to hear and not what you need to hear. That's what I want you to think about. So in this aspect, it's okay to outgrow people. Just like if you're hanging around people that's always drinking and smoking, you're going to be finding yourself doing the same thing. When you're around people that more in tune with their financial goals, you're surrounding yourself like that. It's okay to get those accountability partners. Think about this from the aspect of your friends that you go to college with and your friends that you grew up with and they didn't go to college. You start to go outgrow them and that's okay. Don't make somebody make you feel bad. I remember because I grew up in the hood and people like, oh, you changed. You right. I did change. I was supposed to. you supposed to evolve. You should not be the same person that you was a year ago. You shouldn't be the same person. You should want that growth. You should want more for yourself. Become the best and bigger version of yourself. Three, set boundaries and stand on. One thing is don't go back to the same place that you prayed yourself out of. So you may have to set boundaries for someone that was toxic or a certain environment. Don't go back to that same environment. Just make for sure you set your boundaries. I need you I need you to come in a little closer. I need y'all to say no with me, okay? No. Come on, repeat after me. No. No, 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 no. No is a complete answer, and you don't owe anybody any type of explanation. If someone asks you to come borrow some money, guess what? No. You ain't got to explain yourself of why you don't want to give somebody some money, and I'm going to keep it real with y'all. As y'all financial coach, we're not about to be allowing people to borrow money from us that we can't ask for the same return. The answer is no. Let's say your boss called you in and said, hey, can you work today? You already had plans. The answer is no. Don't feel obligated to explain to them. You a grown woman or a grown man, and it's okay. No. Five. Be prepared for what you're praying for. Oftentimes, we sit up here and say we want um, financial success, financial freedom. Uh, you want good credit. Uh, you want to be able to travel the world. You want to make more money. We have all these things that we want, right? But are you properly prepared for it? I remember when I kept saying that, oh, I'm ready to be a millionaire. But I didn't have the systems. I didn't have the staffing. I, I was not properly prepared. I thought I was. It took a new level that I needed in order to get to, to, get to seven figures and what I had in place when I was making six figures. So I say this to say is that be prepared for what you're praying for. Another example is like, okay, let's say that you have been in a bad relationship. Let's say that you wasn't being loved the way that you want to be loved or it's a toxic relationship. And then you keep saying that you want all these things and all these qualities in a partner and a mate. Now, when you find that person, let's say, for example, it's a man and you want to pass them up be like, oh, he's quiet or oh, he's a good guy, but you want these knuckleheads that ain't gonna give you nothing but pain and heart. Like, are you prepared for it? You keep saying you want these things, but when it smack you in your face, can you actually be prepared? Can you unlearn and relearn? Can you address those traumas? Can you address that uh, the ugliness and the deep, darkest, secrets parts of you to be willing to accept, to be loved in the capacity that you deserve? That's, that's tea right there. That, look, I don't know. That's tea. Nobody want to talk about that, y'all. No, nobody wants to talk about that. Like, be prepared for what you're praying for. Because it's easy for us to say, Lord... I want to become a millionaire. Or this better yet, another one is, Lord, I want to win the lottery. People get to crossing their fingers. They get to praying, crossing their toes. But if you got a million dollars right now, what would you spend it on? Do you even have the proper financial literacy? Do you have the proper money management to handle that, that type of money, that type of increase of income? Some of y'all are praying for things that you are not prepared for, and that's what you got to keep doing the work. 
remember, you may not be where you want to be, but you damn sure not where you used to be. At one point in time, you pray for where you're at. Give yourself grace. I think that's the best thing I can say. Give yourself grace. Six, this is a, a mouthful and I really don't know where to start with this one. There's so much I have been through in the last 30 days. Never dim your light to make nobody else comfortable. And I mean it, like, I'm that person that always wants to put everybody on. I'm talking about black excellence. I'm teaching people on how to make this bag and how to invest into this and how we can be able to grow together collectively. And folks will be jealous. They'll be jealous by your family, your friends, your relationships, the way you, uh, your persona, the way you walk into a room by your confidence. Like, people really be jealous. And I just learned recently how your friends become your enemy. Sometimes it's the ones that's closer to you. Everybody truly cannot go to the Everybody can go to the top. I had to leave some people. I'm gonna be forever scheming. Woke up, I thought I was dreaming. And and that's like friendship heartbreaks. Oh man, that's some of the worst. And I really just like for someone that was so driven that has all these goals. Sometimes I feel bad for one to share my highlights because. I didn't know how people receive them. I didn't know how to be proud of myself. I didn't know how to embrace myself sometimes. I was always wondering, oh, well, I don't want to like tiptoe. Like, honestly, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I don't even like the word humble. I don't believe in being like boastful or like derogatory, like making somebody feel down or something like that. But I don't believe in being humble. What is humble? We all got the same 24 hours in a day. And you mean to tell me I shouldn't be proud of myself for the sacrifices, for the resilience, the perseverance, the tears, like the, the crying, the depression the anxiety some people don't understand what it takes to be you they quick to want to be in your shoes but they could not walk a mile into it so i'm here to tell you it's never going forward dim your light to make the next person comfortable seven communication everybody think they're a good communicator until it's time to be vulnerable and have the honest conversations the ones that makes you nervous the ones that give you the butterflies in your stomach the one that you know when you know you need to do things for yourself but you're scared because you don't know how it's going to be perceived it's time to communicate and teach people on how to love you teach people on how to support you teach people how to be there Quit accepting less than what you deserve. And I'm tired of like, as a birthday, y'all know birthday's coming up because I'm a Gemini. <laughs> June 17th. I remember I had one friend was like, oh, I don't know what to get you. You got everything. That's not okay. I need you to learn me. Like teach people on how to be there. Hey, I'm going through this and I would like more of your time. Or hey, I'm always seem like I'm reaching out to you. I need you to call and check on me. It, look, I'm one of the strong friends and what I'm not allowing anymore in 2023 or going forward is transactional relationships. I only want meaningful relationships. I don't want that surface level. I, my time is too valuable and I have too much love to give. So what you won't do, somebody else will, but make for sure you communicating on how you feel, communicating your boundaries, communicating the, the verbal and nonverbal. You need to make for sure you communicating because ain't nobody going to get you or ain't nobody gonna have your back like you gonna have yourself. Does that make sense, y'all? Prioritize your mental health. Too many times we are um, shying away from that. There's no wealth without him. W-E-A-L-T-H. Drop the T, drop the W. What word do you have? It's heal. You have to heal, honestly. I think one of the biggest contributes of my success is being able to heal. Because sometimes when people want to take you to the next level, you can't respond to that. So like, it's the phrase that you go to therapy for those that is afraid to go to therapy, right? Somebody called me and beat to my face. And you just got to learn how to walk away. Like, you can't risk and sacrifice everything that you've been working so hard for. Like, does that make sense? Like, in order to achieve wealth, you have to heal. You have to heal from your trauma from your parents, of your kids. You know, your parents was a kid having a kid and that is okay they did not know how to be a parent you have to let that go you have to heal from whatever abandonment issues that you have you need to heal from the low self-esteem or the insecurity was you bullied as a child and that's why you overcompensate with your money or you overcompensating as a parent whatever it is you need to be able to heal to be able to become the best version of yourself it's okay to not be okay but get the help that you deserve and do it for yourself and don't do it for nobody else nine failure Failure is part of success. Fail for, fail fast. Quit thinking about everything that can go wrong and think about everything can go right. It may seem so simple, but it's so true. The biggest risk that I took was leaving the financial sector for 15 years to become a self-employed, working for myself. No PP loan, unemployment, not picking a part-time job, just doing it myself. When I left the credit union, I made more money for myself than I made for anybody else. I say this to say it's fail for, fail fast. It, you will never, it, nothing will ever be perfect. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. When I was playing YouTube two weeks ago, 
know, I didn't got my makeup done, I didn't got dressed up, everything was trash. I did not like it. And I just kept thinking everything had to be perfect. And then I became idle. And then I started to get nervous. And then I started to get anxiety. I was like, oh my gosh, like, how's this first video gonna work? I'm just gonna put it out here. It's up to y'all to judge. But ultimately, I'm doing it. So do it scared. Just do it. Put one foot before the other and just keep going and going and going. Fail forward and fail fast. Without further ado, number 10 is credit. Come on now, y'all with credit coach. So I gotta let y'all know, credit is everything. This is how you start, grow, and scale your business. Some of y'all be like, oh, I want business credit. I want business credit. You forget you got personal credit. When your personal credit is pissed for, so how the hell you think you about to go get this business loan? Your credit score is like your adult GPA. It's a reflection of your buying power. It's gonna tell you if you're approved or denied for a loan, if you need a co-sign or not, or what's this interest rate. Your credit is everything. I remember my first credit card was a $700 credit card limit. I now have access to over six figures. Six figures in personal credit. Make sure you subscribe because there's gonna be videos on that. But like all jokes aside, your credit is gonna impact your employment, it's gonna impact your insurance rate, it's gonna impact your life insurance premiums, it's gonna impact if you gotta get a rental car, uh, if you gotta pay deposits, your approval limits, what type of car you would drive, what neighborhood, the nutrition your food, your kids would eat. Literally, your credit score will impact everything. These are my 10 secrets of navigating success. I was able to get to where I'm at today by leveraging my credit and I'll teach you guys as well. But I like to have an uncomfortable conversation, so make for sure you chime in below. Let me know if you like these top 10 or if there are any others that you would like to contribute. I'm your girl, Nika Johnson, and I just got one question for you. Is that in your budget?